guys. Morning. Uh, first, I want to thank everyone. Uh, I'm heading to the post office to ship out a bunch of merchandise. I put it on Facebook that we were donating all the uh, Facebook and Instagram and in the videos, but we're donating all the profits, and I've got a lot of orders. I think I'm shipping out uh, 20 some odd shirts and hats, and uh, I don't know, that's pretty cool. Thanks, everyone. But after we get back from that, we're going to grease the Turbo Max and we're going to head out to the field. I think it's dry enough. We've got rain. Uh, it tried to rain yesterday a little bit, but not really much. And the day before that, it rained a little bit. So, got a little bit of rain, but not much. I think I think this sandy ground we should still be good to go on. So, we're going to give it a try. All right, turns out it takes a while to send that many packages, but uh, got them shipped. I'm just getting ready to pull in here to the office. Dad's going to meet me here. I guess we're going to go look at some flood uh, the river bottoms, see how much flood uh, damage we're going to clean up, so many trees are out in the field, stuff like that. I don't know if we're going to do that today, but we're at least going to go over there and get a plan together for whatever reason. Now when the water was out, it just so happened the water was out while we were at Louisville, otherwise I'd have took a video of the water, flood water. Um, I mean, especially compared to out in the Midwest right now, this was nothing. I mean, it, all it did was just bring water into the river bottom fields. So we didn't have any structures go underwater or anything like that. And I really don't think there's any damage to any kind of property, even anywhere down through here. Uh, or just some debris being out in the fields. So that's what we're going to check out now. We've had higher waters before. This is probably the biggest it's been in, what, 10 years or so? Uh, four or five. Okay, man, Still a lot of surface water over here. The water's been out now for almost a month and a half, but low spots still got water in them. Still draining out real slow. That is the rail line that goes to our Cargill. We're only about when you say by rail, we're probably only five miles from Cargill right now, aren't we? Yeah. So uh, there's our corn scattered all the way to the river, it looks like. I know somebody else that did that back in harvest. I think it was harvest day four. Between us and John, I think I need to get down out of the house. Come over with a loader and do that. Are you going to spread this? Yeah. So you want me to do these stalks first? Huh? Yeah, I'll do the stalks first. Okay, here we are starting to fertilize for corn of 2019. Brian wanted me to show you how this floater works. Uh, first of all, we got a load on here, probably around eight ton or so, pretty full. Uh, there's the monitor, the ag leader monitor. This is a light bar when we get set. This is what we uh, will start out with all these dots across here. I'll show you when we get started. This is the monitor. And to get it all calibrated, uh, we gotta go out and we'll get what farm it is. We'll have the farms in here. We'll get a list of farms, got them in the fields. And we got, it's a blend fertilize and tells how much uh, dap and potash, how many pounds of each we're putting on. And we should be ready to go. We're gonna spread 80 feet what we're spreading. So we go, this is the first round. So you kind of just gotta guess the first round kind of. Turn around 
your dots up. Easier said than done sometimes. Turn the web on, line dots up and go. Okay, we're just about out. I don't think we'll make it. Nope, we're out now. See that? Shut the web off. Quit mapping. Come out pretty close. Might be just a little bit heavy. But I think I lapped too far over in the corn when I first started. So should be about 41 acres. Let's see what we got. 41.9. So we're just a hair. So it's going to cut set pretty good, I think. I just drove a little too close to the corn over on the first ground. Through some out that, which won't hurt a thing. Okay, we're we'll getting our load and uh, go to their field. And we'll finish this what we do across the road. We got to do that. But we're not going to do it today. Okay, now we're done with this here before we leave we've got to record everything that I've done. I put it down in a notebook. Then I also got an app on my phone I put it in, so we'll do that now. Alright, before we get that thing out of the barn, there's one thing I gotta take care of first. Alright. We got another corn head. Alright. Now before we get any further, I don't think we're gonna run two combines and corn very often. Even with this other cornhead, we still don't have the capacity to do that very often. But we got this cornhead at a really good buy. Um, it may have a gearbox or two out of it, which would definitely affect how good of a buy it is. But we got it cheap enough that we could probably junk it and be okay if we had to. So hopefully we can get this thing running. But I just went and picked it up. And now we're going to get back to the Turbo Max. Get this thing backed out of here. Greased up. Now, first thing I'm going to do is uh, put the stops on this thing before I start crawling around under it. Because you do have to get under the under there to uh, get those grease fittings. Uh, Alright. So, each uh, gang has two grease fittings. Each wheel has a grease fitting. And then each rolling basket and spike to, uh, roller or whatever you call it, it has two grease fittings. You may be wondering why we just didn't grease these while we were rebuilding it. Well, probably could have. You couldn't do it until it was all bolted back together. That's just how the bearing seals up, but uh, we just didn't. So, I'm doing it now. All right. She's greased. Let's get out of here. All right, I realized we got to get some fuel. Also, I need to go get my climate drive. So that we can record what we're doing. Now, if you're wondering what I'm talking about when I say my climate drive, that's what this is. This device ties in the computer's diagnostic uh, port, the cam port, I think is what it's called. And with that, it's able to collect all the data that my monitor is recording. It uses this puck to put off a Bluetooth signal to this iPad. And then all that data is streamed right to that iPad, and then it's on our uh, account. I think it's a web-based account, but it's just a more user-friendly way of uh, getting the data out of this monitor. I mean, you can use a program called SMS to do that, but um, I kind of like climbing a little better. If you hadn't uh, watched all of our harvest uh, videos, we had quite a bit of trouble with field view working in our combines, and we're not super happy with the customer support we've gotten uh, I mean it seems to be working okay now but we kind of looked into switching to maybe Farmer's Edge they do something pretty similar to Field View so if any of you guys have any experience with them I'd love to hear your input on them there's no one in this area of Ohio that has them really it's they're kind of just pushing this far east all right we're getting ready to make the first pass of this field I don't know how dry this is I mean it's gonna be heavy I'm sure Alright, we got an AB line made. We're moving. Yeah, uh, I see Brian up here. He finally got a starter turbo tail. Alright, starting to remember how to use this thing. Got my go in functions all set up. Uh, I'm pretty sure that whenever I start doing planning, it'll be easier to do where I'm just uh, doing tillage. I do my headlands last, so I just, I'm just i recording what I'm doing, and then I just hit go or end when I get to the end or beginning, and it lifts my machine for me, speeds me up, and all that good stuff. Yeah, there's Brian here. Looks like he got the fence right when he turned. He'll probably never put this in there, but I'd talk to him about it. Told him why he just folded it up, so that's what he's doing. 
You got too close to the fence. That happens. This field that I'm in is a big triangle. And uh, whenever I come to the uh, angled piece of it, like when I'm coming into that angle, I don't know. You can tell I haven't done this for a few months. Dad just happened to pull in with the uh, fertilized spreader as I'm uh, just about to hit the fence with the Turbo Max when I'm turning. Perfect. I love it when people see that kind of stuff. This was the first field we did on harvest day one. That was the first field. Uh, didn't, didn't plant that way, but it happened. All right. Uh, I'm going to redesign this uh, bracket holder. As you can see, the camera's on it. It's probably shaking quite a bit. But... Well, I figured uh, we just got done with this field. We might as well get out and look at the soil. I know a lot of people have asked, are asking how dry is it here. So... Let's go ahead and take a look. I mean, it's still very tacky. And it's not super dry, but this this ground has a lot of sandy texture to it. I mean, but, I mean it's not too wet, but it's not it's not super dry either by any means. like the meal wagons here. Let's see what she got. Man. What are you eating there, bub? Yes. Ready for your first tractor ride of the year? Yeah. Hey, see Pappy over here in the back home? I mean, I'll play it right now. Yeah. That's Pappy all playing right now. Uh-huh, that's Pappy way over there. It wow. brought me a blizzard from Dairy Queen. Something wrong with my blizzard. It's this big. It's empty. It's this big it's a Big tractor. You like this big tractor? Yeah. Yeah. This is a new tractor. Yep. Yeah, this is a new tractor. Sorry. You leaving? Yeah. Okay. Hi, hey, baby. Thanks for bringing me dinner. Yeah. Hi, Emmy. Hi, Daddy. I pulled out and I had it on the hood and fell off, so I don't know where it's at there in that corner or someplace. I might have pushed it up in the brush, hopefully. Okay, I'll look out for it. Well, that's all the corn stalks over on this farm. This field beside me is a wheat stubble field. Uh, Dad just put fertilizer on it. Usually, I would go ahead and run the turbo over it, kind of incorporate that stuff in, chop up that wheat stubble, but he's thinking maybe we'll get the chance to put some uh, lime on that still yet, so I'm going to wait a little while. Hopefully we can get some lime on it, but I will be surprised if we do. We are going to take this thing to the barn, and that's going to be it for tillage for the night. It's not supposed to run. I don't think it's supposed to rain till Monday. This is Saturday, so there's about 150 to 200 acres of ground that's still dry enough to do this one. We should be able to do that tomorrow, provided nothing breaks and nothing else happens. But uh, I don't know what we'll do after that because I don't think we really have any other ground that's dry enough that has corn stalks on it to run this over right now. So I don't know.
as it turns out, Turbo Max will not quite fit in this door. Now, I didn't hit it, I was watching it as it came in, but it started to rub, so I just left it here. Usually we'd put it in that other building, but right now there just isn't room for it, so I have to move some stuff around sometime. Well guys, that's gonna be it for today. So, like I said, hopefully tomorrow we can do some more tillage. Uh, Dad just gave me a ride back here to my pickup. He said maybe, so he didn't know, he said we'd just make around determine that when we get there he said it was plenty wet so i don't know we'll see but thanks for watching uh, if you like what you've seen as always follow us on instagram and twitter at brian's farming videos facebook at brown farms and we'll see you tomorrow